Okay, some of y'all wanted to see uh, after my trip pictures what the bus looked like because in the in the last video, and it's been a while since I've posted a video, but in the last video, obviously, uh, it wasn't anywhere near the condition that uh, it looked like I'd be able to take a trip in. And definitely, based on the, some of the pictures that I showed, uh, the bus didn't look anything like it did uh, on the last video. So obviously... Um, as we walk around, obviously, the bus has been painted um, all the way around. You may have seen a video that I showed uh, where my son and one of his friends did the paint. So, uh, they did a great job. This is a very basic paint. I wasn't worried about this looking uh, super spectacular or anything. This is a basic gray paint job. Now, you're going to see in this video that the front is totally covered in bugs. I haven't washed it yet. Uh, but it, it's just nasty covered with bugs right now. Uh, headlights have been replaced with uh, LEDs. I think I may have showed that in one of the videos, uh, but just going on with that. Um, I'm going to move forward here, getting into the bus. So this right here is a 12-volt uh, refrigerator freezer. You can make it either one uh, just based off the controls here. Now this actually runs off of this actually, this actually, sorry, I killed that. This actually runs off this cord here, which goes to a cigarette lighter. So it's 12 volts, runs off the cigarette lighter. Uh, this actually works extremely well. I've got it strapped down here with this little bungee cord. So that way as we're driving, obviously if I hit the brakes or something, it doesn't go flying. But you can see, uh, and in comparison to the size of the water bottles, it holds, it holds quite a bit for the size. Uh, does a great job about keeping things cold. Uh, and we used it on the trip very well. Uh, worked wonders. I didn't pay much for it. I think it was like 129 bucks, if that. Not a top-end model. As you can see, it's called Bravino. Not a top-end model at all. I didn't anticipate on paying for a top-end model because I wasn't sure when I bought it if it was going to be something that I was going to utilize in a useful fashion. Uh, in the build as it was. Come to find out, it was very useful. We utilized it a lot, and I'll explain a little bit about that here in just a second. Um, this seat right here, turn. This seat I actually bought out of a junkyard, out of a 2000-ish uh, Suburban Tahoe, something more along those body styles. The reason I got this particular seat is because of the integrated seat belt here. Um, so that way I wouldn't have to mount anything to the frame of the bus. And then the floor, it's integrated all in one piece. And that way all I had to do was mount here and then uh, just mount it to the floor. Now also, as you can see this here, this is actually, it's hard to do with one hand. Hold on. But as you can see, that handle is a spinning uh, platform to make it like a captain's chair. So this will spin. Uh, so, uh, I, and you'll see what I'm going to do with here in a minute. But I want it to spin so that way the person sitting here, A, as they're facing forward, uh, they can obviously just be a passenger. And as they sit here... You know, obviously they can look out the window, they can look out this window, they can look out their side window, and they could just be a passenger like they would in a car. But then also, let's see if I can get it to work. This is kind of hard for me to do with one hand. Then we have to flip the bike all the way up. Sorry about the shakiness of the of the camera there when I did that. But now, as you'll see, it's spun all the way around. And then we've built this table here. Now, right now, it's in the upright position. It's got these little locks on it. I'm going to remove this little light. The light itself is not important. But remove these. Remove my little latch. 
Now, if you'll see that little bar there and the little stop, it folds down into a nice little dinette. Now, I got this, so it's actually a dinette. It's a part of a two-person booth top that you would get out of a restaurant. I actually got this for like 10 bucks at a Peddler's Mall. But just sits like this. It's hinged to the wall, hinged down there, and then that stops it. So then this, as you can see, has now spun around and turns into the seat where somebody can just sit and enjoy their lunch. Now, obviously, I don't have a seat yet installed for the other side. I do have the seat. I do have it. It's in the garage, but I don't have it installed yet. We didn't get a chance to install it before the trip. Um, and that's okay. Uh, but I do have it. Going to get it installed. I had to have the seat actually um, welded to the base by a local welder and because I wanted to be able to spin. Now, obviously, this one's going to be facing the right way the entire time, so I don't necessarily need it to spin if it's going to be right here. It's going to be facing the front anyway. I don't know if I want it to spin this way to be able to face this way for any reason. So I don't know. Now I have this futon here, full length futon. Obviously it actually slides out into a full size bed here. Uh, this is what my son slept on while we were on the trip. Uh, not super comfortable obviously because it's a futon, but it wasn't bad. He said he slept well enough on it that it, it was acceptable. Uh, just And as you can see, my floors aren't covered yet. Still just bare plywood, but it was good enough for the trip. Here we've built in a closet kind of thing. Not done yet. This was originally going to be, I had decided it was originally going to be a shower that we hadn't finished yet. But after the trip, we've decided to turn this into a shelving closet. That's my generator. Um, this uh, extension cord was what we were using for power while we were in the state parks and everything because they provide a, uh, a 30 and a 50 or a 20 and a 30 amp power outlet. And we were just using the extension cord along with the power strip there for power and it was highly sufficient. I didn't actually have to use the generator once. But this is a 2300 watt max uh, generator. I actually got it super cheap from Amazon and it works really, really well. Um, but we're going to end up putting shelves. We'll end up putting a shelf right here and a couple other shelves. Because one of the things we encountered uh, that we desperately needed in the entire trip was shelf space. Uh, that ended up being a huge, huge thing that we decided early on that was that was a massive problem with the bus was shelves. We didn't have enough storage space. Um, right here, let's move this out of the way. That is our green, the green bucket is our garbage can. The white bucket is our composting material for our composting toilet, which I'll get to here in just a second. Now, this is my, this is my bed. This is a full-size mattress uh, with a foam topper. I have an extremely, extremely bad back. So the foam topper is necessary for me to be able to sleep at all uh, on, on a mattress. Um, now this is very high off the ground. The reason I put it that high is so that I can store tubs underneath of it. Uh, also it is that high because eventually all of my solar equipment will go under the bed and I need to make sure I've got enough room for the batteries, for the solar charger, uh, the uh, inverter and all that equipment. So it will eventually go under there. You'll notice, you'll notice I've got this piece right here. That's to keep everything from sliding out from under it as we drive. Uh, I also did the same thing in places for the futon to make sure the futon there and there to make sure the futon doesn't slide out the floor because we did have that trouble. Now, obviously, the little futon rail keeps that from sliding out, but that was an issue. We also did, we also did the same thing here to keep the generator from coming out. This here is the bathroom. That's my composting toilet. Uh, haven't worked out anything for a urinal quite yet. We didn't need one on the trip, luckily, since it was just me and Jado. And we stayed mostly in state parks, but we're, I'm gonna be working up something for a urinal. Um, then this is the sink. 
uh, obviously sink I actually have a working drain I did have this little faucet um, now as you can see it's not pumping any water because the faucet and the the piping system this faucet just doesn't work very well just doesn't work very well at all but I do have the drain the drain actually runs down into this five gallon bucket all of this is leak tight and airtight the, the the drain itself so I don't lose any water um, and as long as I have my as long as I have one of these plugs in the drain hold on excuse me as long as I have one of the plugs in the drain I don't have any anything with smell coming up through the drain so as long as I have one of those down in there I'm good to go keeps the smell from coming back up there is actually my water uh, I've been struggling with this because for some odd reason this, the pickup, which I have all the way down in there and it's set right, it just doesn't want to pick up on a consistent basis. So that's something I've been fighting with. But that's a five gallon water tank and that's a five, the, that's also a five gallon waste tank. Um, so I'll have water and I'll have drainage uh, wherever I need to be able to use water. Again, we didn't use a lot of that. There was one place where we had to actually do our dishes uh, in uh, in the bus other places we could like rinse them off on a spigot outside uh, the park because it was just food particles and that wasn't a bad thing but uh, there was one place where we actually had to do the dishes actually in here not a big deal that's what the bus is for that's what it was planned for and this worked out very well uh, curtain on the back just just a curtain uh, and as you can see the windows are painted you can't see in those at all it looks like that's possibly see-through but it is absolutely not uh, and that's about it guys. There's not a lot, not a lot, uh, to this as far as what we got accomplished. There's still a lot to get done. Now, one of the things I do have, you know, at nights we put this window shade, uh, up across the entire windshield so you can't see in. And then I also have, I also have this piece of foam here. This actually gets put up in the in the window and close the door on it, so that covers that window. And then I've got somebody who's going to be making me curtains, dark insulated curtains for these windows. <coughs> Excuse me, and these windows, so we'll have a lot more privacy in. And I'm not done yet; slow going, uh, but I'm getting there. Eventually, I'll have all my lights in. And everything the solar is going to take some time i'm finding that honestly the solar is is probably going to be a long-term project because right now i really don't need it between my generator and everything else i just i don't need it uh the fridge this right here i was going to address i actually have one of those little portable battery banks like the big ones not the little ones but like a big square box it will actually power my fridge overnight for like an eight hour period so even if i don't have power at night when i sleep let's say i'm parked on the side of the road somewhere or somewhere that doesn't provide electricity while the bus is not running i can just unplug it from the 12 volt there but plug it into my little power box and it'll actually run the fridge for me while the bus is not running and then the next morning i can get up plug the fridge in there and my little power box uh, will also charge via 12 volts, so I can plug it into the cigarette lighter as well. I have that cigarette lighter there, that one there. Then, as you can see, I wired in a couple of more cigarette lighters. So I have plenty of power to charge up all of my chargeables. And if I had to run that again for another night, uh, I could probably do so, depending on how much I drove that day. Or if we ended up somewhere where I could actually plug in my battery box to a, to a, a 110, uh, that would give me that. But again, uh, you know, it's not complete. It was very rough, like I said. Uh, you can see there's a lot of there's a lot of revealed edges. There's gaps, but it was enough to get us what we needed to get done, and we had a really good time. So, if you have any questions, obviously hit me up and ask me. Um, definitely, definitely able to answer any questions you might have, and would love to answer those for you. Um, I encourage anybody who's thinking about converting something like this, whether it's a bus, a shuttle bus, a box truck, or gutting an RV and, and redoing the whole thing yourself, I highly recommend you do it. Uh, 
if you have the 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 wherewithal, the skill set, or the money. If you want to pay somebody to do it based on your designs and do it with like real materials, uh, I absolutely recommend it. But you wanted an update? Here is your update. I hope this uh, I hope this helps out. And thanks a lot.